on his call. We have with us today Mr. Sanjeev Lal, the Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Nagarajan, the Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Ashish Mehta, the Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussions may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainties. A detailed statement in this regard is available in the results presentation. I now invite Mr. Lal to begin the proceeding of the call. Over to you, Sanjeev. Uh, thank you, Gavin, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on today's call. I'm joined by Mr. Nagarajan and uh, Ashish, our CFO. Uh, let me begin the discussion with a quick overview of the sector, post which I will discuss valid specific business developments, after which I will request Ashish to walk us through the, uh, the perspective on the financial performance. Uh, the agrochemical industry has been amongst the handful of industries that has been able to recalibrate and restore normalcy across business operations following the COVID-19 led challenges. Barring a few issues, the industry is more or less back on track. Domestically, the industry has been fairly buoyant, led by normal monsoons and remunerative prices, all of which has resulted in an acceleration in agricultural activities. The current year, too, is expected to be good with adequate uh, water levels in reservoirs, which bodes well for the upcoming rabi season. With acreage and crop prices both improving, I believe the sector is structurally well placed. In the near term though, talking specifically about the quarter gone by, performance has been largely benign as excessive rains during the month of August and September resulted in lower usage of spray chemicals with lower pest infestation. Paddy and cotton, which are the key crops for the sector, witness lower pest infestation, stem borer, leaf holder, sucking pests, ground plant hover attack was low in paddy and cotton, uh, which saw low uh, pink uh, fallworm infestation in Gujarat, Maharashtra, and Telangana. Uh, fall army worm attack also was relatively contained across India. We believe channel inventory levels continue to remain normal. Further advancement of sales in Q1 uh, impacted overall sales momentum during Q2 as sales figures normalized over the two quarters. As such, it is more useful to compare each one of current year with that of the previous year to get an idea of trends in the domestic market. Now, Moving on to rallies domestic developments, we had a fairly steady quarter as can be seen by our financials. Domestic performance remained strong with a growth of 7%. In our international business, uh, barring Metribusen, many of our key products registered volume growth over previous year. Metribusen, as we have been indicating, remained under pressure from both a price and volume perspective, owing to excess inventories in the system. However, we expect things to gradually improve from here on, which would drive the international business. During the first half of this year, we have recorded the highest sales by volume of three of our key export products. However, our CM products showed a decline over the previous period as EEKK dispatches were nil and will continue to be so till the airline industry starts turning around. Our approach to prioritizing cash flow has resulted in an increase of cash flow operations of Rs. 276 crores versus 227 crores in the previous year. I will let Ashish talk about it in more depth uh, after this uh, opening remarks. Talking about domestic business, as we have been saying in previous calls, our focus continues to be on driving growth by introducing new products and 90 products each year over the next few years. After having launched six new products last year, I'm glad to announce that we have launched one 90 product demand during the current quarter. It's a fungicide aimed at grape crop for control of uh, downy mildew. We are confident that the new product will help us build on the revenue momentum which has gathered steam following the success of last year's product launches. However, due to the pandemic restrictions, demand generation for products newly launched in the previous year, previous year was hampered and hence volume scale up was modest. We have also launched two new crop nutrition products, Flowbore, a 10% liquid boron, and Aquafert, a 
a foliar nutrition product for vegetables during Q2. Moving on to the seeds business, performance during the quarter was largely satisfying following a subdued Q1. We have been able to achieve growth in our maize seeds, particularly on the back of strong performance in Tamil Nadu, and our maize category crossed rupees 100 crores in terms of turnover. We are happy with the things are shaping up for our seeds business. We are making steady progress towards building a comprehensive portfolio of our seeds business by strengthening the rabi segment. Vegetables as well remains an area of focus for the business, and I am pleased the way things are shaping. Uh, on our international business, uh, revenues declined by 29% year on year, despite the volume growth, growth in many of our key products. Revenue performance was impacted by the pressure presently being witnessed in metribusing, and due to um, a realization decline year on year, even on growing products. However, uh, GC margins of uh, revenue have been broadly uh, stable. Contract manufacturing business was expected to remain under pressure following low uptake of PKK, which is largely used in the aviation business. We remain hopeful of positive developments in this regard over the medium term. While it may take time to achieve the overall desired results in contract manufacturing, we are nonetheless making steady incremental progress towards the same. A quick update on CapEx before I hand over to Ashish. We expect to commission our formulation facility in the Hage chemical zone uh, during Q4 of this financial year, as some delays in Vasaj largely owing to COVID-19 led challenges and excessive rainfall at the project area. We also expect to set up our multi-product plant at the Hage SEZ uh, during Q3 of FY22. Uh, to conclude, I would just like to reiterate that the sector fundamentals are broadly in place. Domestic business continues to grow at a steady rate. Internationally as well, things are stabilizing, which should help the overall growth of the business. Our product portfolio and pipeline remains healthy. Each business as well is shaping up well. Revised credit terms and distribu distribution refresh is helping us grow our sales and cash flow. Further, the completion of cap CapEx program will help us provide necessary growth momentum for the business. International business as well should improve going forward, which will help us to diversify our revenue mix and improve profitability. With those uh, uh, opening remarks, I will now hand over to Ashish uh, to talk us through the financial performance. Over to you, Ashish. Thank you, Sanjeev, and good morning, and welcome to all on the earnings call of Q2 FY21. To summarize the overall results, uh, I'll first uh, speak about the Q2. Revenue was at 725 crores versus 749 crores in the same quarter in previous year. EBITDA at 117 crores versus 120 crores. Profit before tax, before exceptional item was at 108 crores, higher than 106 crores in the same period in previous year. Profit after tax, after exceptional item was at 83 crores versus 86 crores in the previous year. Previous year's revenue, uh, you should uh, know that it includes about 10 crores of revenue from pharma AI business, which was which has been since discontinued. For the H1 results, revenue was at 1,388 crores versus 1,372 crores, a growth of 1%. EBITDA of 245 crores versus 215 crores in previous year. Profit before tax was at 228 crores versus 194 crores in previous year. And profit after tax, after exceptional item, was at 175 crores, versus 147 crores in the previous year. I'll now give a brief on how each business is performed during the quarter. Crop care. The revenue from crop care, which is largely the domestic business, domestic crop care, witness was at 436 crores against 408 crores in the previous year, registering an overall growth of 8%, largely contributed by volume growth of 10%, and a bit of price correction downwards. We saw growth in volumes of some of our major branded products like Takumi, Capta, Conta Plus, Asata, Blytox, Tata Panida. Our newly introduced Ayan was also, has also witnessed a good volume growth. In the international business B2B, challenges in metribusin still continued in the second quarter as well. Overall revenue was at 145 crores versus 188 crores in the same period in previous year. There was a volume growth in SFA tax, roughly 17%, Fendi tax, almost 46%, while a drop in volume and price of metric tech. International business in the contract manufacturing segment 
registered a revenue of only 10 crores versus 29 crores of uh, in the same period in the previous year, largely due to drop in volumes both of metconazole and PKK, and also the price corrections that happened in uh, uh, sorry uh, demand for PKK continues to be low in the next two quarters, and we hope to liquidate the stock by end of Q3 or beginning Q4. Seed division top line growth was at 29 percent. A growth of 29 at 73 crores versus 57 crores in the same period in the previous year. This was largely driven by volume growth in maize and mustard, coupled with better price realization. Overall volume growth has been 23 percent. Plant growth, nutrient and organic manure registered a top line growth of 39 crores versus 32 crores, a growth of 22 percent. Due to better working capital management, cash from operating activities was at 278 crores versus 227 crores in the previous year. Overall working capital days improved to 65 days versus 104 days in the previous year. Inventory levels were high compared to previous year, largely due to stocking of critical raw materials to meet the demand for Q3 FY21. However, receivable days improved to 75 days from the previous 101 day, one day. Cash and cash equivalents, including liquid in investments, stood at 470 crores roughly versus 347 crores in the previous year. Progress on CAPEX, there has been a good progress in some of our major CAPEX. Formulation plant at the chemical zone expected to start commercial product, uh, production by end of current financial year. The second phase of metric capacity expansion is over and the plant is now ready for commercial production. Expansion, uh, expansion of other active ingredients produced at our Ankleshwa unit is well on track. Work is also going on setting up the MPP at the HSEZ zone. The board has approved a further investment of roughly 70 crores yesterday towards capacity building. Hence, out of about 800 crores of investment that was to be done over a period of three to five years, as on date, we have committed and a line of set site of roughly 525 crores, including setting up of the new R&D center at Bangalore. I now hand over to Gavin for the Q&A section. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star, then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star, then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who wishes to ask questions, please press star, then one. The first question is from the line of Prashant Biani from Prabhudas Gilazar. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So, first one clarification on our total international and domestic revenue. Can you share the uh, figures once again for current quarter and last quarter? Total international including everything and total domestic including everything. Ashish, yeah. International is uh, 154 crores against 217 crores of last year. Okay. And domestic uh, seed is 73 crores versus 57 of last year. Domestic crop care, which includes, uh, say, the, the domestic formulation, the PGN, the GeoGreen, and the domestic institutional business was at 486 crores versus 451 crores of last year. And others, which includes uh, Aqua and some other items, HHP, and the, it was at 12 crores versus 24 crores of last year. So if I'm not mistaken, last year in Q2, you had mentioned international business revenue of 325 crore. Can you, I mean, has there been any restatement or anything? No, no, there's no restatement. No, no. I don't know. It's very clearly written there also. In the, uh, so it is only 217 crore. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and sir, uh, have we started to sell anything from our phase two metribuzin plant? Well, the plant has been commissioned and uh, uh, it is uh, operational. And uh, in fact, uh, we have been uh, running it just to uh, keep it commissioned. But uh, as such, uh, the volumes of metri have only uh, started moving towards end of Q2. And um, we have also got some uh, registrations uh, uh, for our formulated product also from uh, the, uh, uh, for the international business. So while the volumes have been subdued, I think uh, the inventories which have been the key cause of our uh, lower sales 
seems to be showing some correction because some inquiries have now started coming in. So we are hopeful that uh, over the next uh, two quarters, things should uh, start improving. In the meantime, we continue to uh, uh, produce and build up some inventory in anticipation of uh, the sales picking up. Okay. And so the capex that we are undertaking for AI, these AIs are relating to our backward integration or these are all separate products? No, the backward integration, uh, while we have kept aside some money for that, a uh, large part of the capex is going towards new AIs. And how much are we investing in these? So the, the new multi-product plant is intended for the, uh, the new AIs. Uh, apart from that, uh, as already mentioned, uh, most of the capacities that are on Kleshwar plant have been revamped or are being revamped for completion within uh, this financial year uh, for commissioning. So products like hexaconazole, we've already uh, revamped the capacity. In fact, uh, this one of the three products where we registered the highest ever export was hexaconazole as well. Okay. So, I mean, sir, any indication of, you know, how much uh, revenue can we have at optimum capacity from these AIs, just to get some indication, because these are all revamped uh, facilities. So, asset turn and all, we won't get so much of an idea. Uh, well, uh, I, the way I would look at it is that today we have been running practically flat out in terms of our capacity. And... Um, the, the newer investments for de-bottlenecking these capacities will help us to service the market better. And these are all incremental capexes which have been done to provide the balancing equipment for de-bottlenecking the plant. So the capex involved is uh, important for us but not very significant in the overall scheme of things. The major capex of course is happening in the multi-product plant uh, which we had mentioned will be commissioned only towards uh, Q3 of uh, next financial year and uh, that will be intended for uh, commercializing some of the uh, work that our uh, R&D teams are doing on synthesizing uh, these off-patented AIs. Okay. And there any uh, capex number uh, of the MPP plant? So we, we, we will come back with uh, these kind of numbers, uh, but it is going to be a, a plant which will be able to handle uh, multiple chemistries. Okay, and just one last question. The yes, asset turn okay. from the... Kapiani may be requested to come back in the queue for a follow-up, please. Sure, okay, thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference call, please limit your questions to two per participant. For any further questions, you may come back for a follow-up. The next question is from the line of Rahul Veera from Abacus Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, sir. Uh, so just wanted to, uh, one small question. Wanted to understand the 70 crore cap is the approval that we got from the board. Uh, what will be this for? Uh, so uh, this is investment is intended for uh, uh, certain additional facilities that uh, we propose to build, including some pre-engineering that uh, we need to take up uh, for um, some uh, opportunities in contract manufacturing, uh, as well as to expand uh, our current proposal on the multi-product uh, plant. So we had already got a proposal for MPP, but we are looking at further equipment to be added to the plant, so that was for expanding the scope of our MPP plant. Apart from that, we are also proposing to buy additional land for uh, our seed business. Uh, so some of these approvals are related uh, with that as well. Sure. So, sir, uh, any thought process for crimes or this uh, the that kind of business where we will be going beyond our agrochem business also? For example, for the way we have done for PEKK for the airline industry. Are there any other chemistries we are looking like we are open to source that? Well, uh, Rahul, to be very, very specific, we are intending to focus our contract manufacturing on the agrochemical space primarily. Okay. That means we will not actively look for PM business outside of agrochemical industry. But if there is something that comes to us, we will not refuse it. Sure, sure. Got it. Fair point, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Varshit Shah from MK Global. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question is, can you decipher the international degrowth of 20% into how much of that uh, decline would be, can be attributed to uh, PEKK and metric using uh, so that we can uh, know the health of the business, which is X of these uh, challenges? Thank you. Yeah, may I request Nagar to take that question? Yeah. Uh, so let me let me address it in this way. Uh, as it was already mentioned by uh, Ashish, uh, the Q2 revenue of last year, I'm just restating it again, uh, for international business was 217 crores, right? And this year the Q2 revenue is 154 crores. So the drop is something like 63 crores. We would attribute 80% of the drop to Metribuzine. So Metribuzine is the single biggest contributor to this drop. Like uh, Sanjeev already mentioned, there is volumetric gain we have obtained in other international products. However, there has been a price pressure in those products as well. So there is actually some reduction if you look at it from a revenue point of view, although there is a volume growth in certain products. Clearly, some portion of that is getting compensated by price increase and volume increase in some other products for the international business, but the net effect of that is uh, pretty much a wash if you keep aside the metribuzine impact, right? So the metribuzine impact is the single biggest impact. The second one is, of course, PEKK. PEKK, uh, we have not been having any shipments consequent to the uh, uh, airline industry pretty much uh, shutting down. Uh, in terms of capex purchases. Uh, we have also mentioned metconazole, which is another con uh, contract manufacturing product. We have mentioned it just to sort of indicate that that is actually one of the contributors for the difference between Q2 of this year and Q2 of last year. However, that is not a large portion of the difference, and we do expect that, uh, that there is a timing impact in the uh, metconazole uh, portion, which means that we do have uh, 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 confidence that that is not a, uh, let's say, an impact like contributed by COVID or anything like that. So really speaking, the two big drivers for international businesses drop. One is Metribuzine, and the second is uh, PEKK. Sure. Uh, my second question is on the uh, on this uh, CapEx plan for the year, uh, so in terms of uh, spent for the current year, I think uh, uh, largely the amount is going to be towards the Dahej formulation plant. Uh, any any indicative color on what kind of uh, revenue potential that can scale up? I know that formulation plants are highly scalable, so difficult to put numbers, or is it just more like a capacity of put in place and then this will be to the domestic growth, which is going to come over the years? Uh, and secondly, the main question was on the gross margin expansion. So. So gross margin expansion, I think one of the reasons is also that uh, the product mix is slightly more in favor of uh, domestic B2C business, which is a higher margin business. So out of the gross margin expansion, how much of it would be more due to product mix and, and what is the reason for the balance expansion? I mean, is it just a raw material uh, uh, prices coming down or is, it, is there something else? Thank you. Okay. So on the uh, uh, on the first uh, question which you asked about our uh, uh, um, formulation plant, uh, uh, yes, we are expecting the phase one of the formulation plant to be concluded by March of uh, this year. There has been some disruption uh, contributed by the rains as well as by the uh, uh, manpower difficulties that our contractors have faced due to COVID. Um, so uh, the phase one line is the phase one lines. Uh, we have multiple lines in the uh, in the in the formulation plant. The phase one lines will be completed by March, as we see it at this point in time. Uh, progressively, there will be a revenue loading. The way we have uh, uh, modeled it, obviously, is in terms of looking at uh, the kind of uh, returns that we can expect from this uh, formulation plant over a period of time. The the classical IRR kind of calculation. Revenue profile is based on uh, the assumptions that we have made. Uh, so to give you some kind of a background, we do expect many of our new products, new formulations to come out of this particular plant, as well as additional requirements of our existing 
formulations, our existing formulation, these would also uh, uh, be expected to come out of the plant. At this point in time, I don't think we are able to very precisely put down, let's say, the revenue in the first quarter of next year or something like that. So I guess we will uh, be able to uh, come back or project that even better once, we, once the lines are in place. As you would imagine, there have been significant challenges because of COVID initially, and I think the rains have also contributed uh, to some disruption. So we are right now focused on getting the project up uh, and uh, commissioned, phase one commissioned by end of March. Uh, Varshid, to answer your second question on the gross margins, if I were to uh, talk about the international B2B business, if I remove the, the metribution impact uh, last year and this year, if I don't calculate that, the margin were same as last year uh, for, for the international B2B business. Uh, even in the products like say Asata or Asifate Tech, we realized better prices. There were price corrections in some other molecules, but because of larger volumes going up in uh, 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 the technicals as well as some of our branded products like uh, Asata and uh, Contact, Contact Plus, um, where the margins are uh, higher. So the contribution overall was almost maintained at uh, same level or a little better than I would say last year. And hence uh, it gets reflected in the better uh, margin realization. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you so much. And just one last, if I could squeeze in, uh, any any color you can give on the ramp up of the metabolism capacity, and that's it from my side. Oh, I tentative plan, man. So let's see, battery capacity. Uh, I would say that uh, we would be able to fully utilize it only towards um, Q1 of next financial year. As I mentioned, that we are building up inventory. There is also an annual maintenance shutdown that is planned uh, during Q4 of this financial year, where we will also be doing uh, some amount of uh, reciting of some of our plant and machinery, uh, which will permit us and allow us to expand both the pendimethylene capacity as well as the battery fusion capacity going forward in uh, two different uh, uh, buildings. So there's a bit of work that we have planned during Q4. That's why we are building up inventory. But uh, the entire capacity, our expectation, will be fully utilized from Q1 of next financial year. Thank sure, you. sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajat Sethia from Vidhi Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks. Uh, the only seeds and domestic crop production side, uh, if we can uh, talk about how has industry performed in this quarter and, uh, and also what is the situation uh, in terms of inventory in the industry as well as for us. So I guess in terms of inventory level, our assessment is that uh, there will be more or less um, normal only. And uh, as far as the Others in the industry are uh, concerned, you know, we are yet to see the results and performance of other companies. Uh, we, we did have uh, some uh, inputs coming from uh, Q1, uh, where we had already stated that our cotton seed business had not done as well as we had planned, while some of the others had uh, done fairly well and had shown good growth. So that was uh, a concern for us that our cotton category has not grown. Uh, but uh, this year, our maize uh, has done particularly well. We were quite happy with the way it is performing. Our vegetable seeds business is also picking up. As we are aware that we had created a separate business group for uh, our vegetables business. That is also progressing along uh, quite well. May I request Naga if he has got any insights to share on what our assessment of the competition is? Uh, yes, like what you said, uh, uh, Sanjeev, we don't have information about how their numbers are going to show up or how their performance is going to be. But as uh, you know, uh, the the uh, uh, sowing area has actually gone up this year by about 5%, uh, which is actually quite a substantial increase if you look at the trends over the last few years. Rainfall has been copious. Uh, so we do think that things are quite positive as far as the overall agri sector is concerned or, or have been positive for the Karif season. Uh, the reservoir levels at the end of September seem to be at the same level as it was last year. Uh, remember that last year also Rabi was actually a good season. So we do expect this year's Rabi 
to be similar to last year's rabi generally speaking i would say that uh, the the situation is quite uh, positive uh, from our own point of view like uh, we have mentioned uh, in the crop protection business crop protection business if you were to look at it uh, on a h1 level because i think uh, q2 to q2 actually there is a movement of uh, uh, material that happens in the uh, second in the in the in the quarter and it's a little bit uh, uh confusing to actually uh, just uh, compare quarters so we would say better to compare at the h1 level so h1 uh, in crop protection we have had actually around 14% growth right if you add the q1 and q2 together compared to last year only crop protection uh, remember that we call crop care as something which is crop protection plus the crop nutrition so crop nutrition has actually grown even better actually uh, uh, pgn and uh, geo green have grown by close to 30% in h1 of this year so that's a bit of a surprise for us because if you remember there was this feeling that uh, crop nutrition products which are somewhat more discretionary in nature compared to crop protection which has a mix of prophylactic as well as curative components uh, the belief was that crop nutrition would probably be a little bit more impacted this year uh, consequent to covid and people will probably prioritize purchases of crop protection products but i think uh, we have been a little bit uh, surprised on that count it has actually ended up growing better so we think that perhaps the overall rural economy uh, has been a lot better than what uh, at least what we anticipated uh, and that is kind of witnessed in crop nutrition so we should expect a similar kind of a trend for many of the players this is from a demand side i would say from a supply side uh, there have been as you know tremendous challenges in terms of making material available in the uh, different uh, retail outlets demand generation has been a bit of a challenge we have already mentioned it that uh, uh, our ability to scale up our new products uh, which we had launched last year has been uh, quite severely hampered because of the absence of physical movement so a large portion of our growth in crop protection has actually come from what you can call as old products so this i think is perhaps likely to be an industry trend because the new products that were launched last year or even this year would have probably uh, uh, got hampered in terms of demand uh, uh, demand generation um on the seeds uh, seed side uh, uh uh we have if you again look at it on a h1 basis h1 basis uh we have had a growth of about 7% we had already mentioned that uh, in the end of q1 that we were uh, not very uh, uh, satisfied let us say with the kind of outcomes that we were projecting at that point in time for our cotton portfolio that has played out as we had expected so unfortunately cotton has had has been a bit of a challenge for us uh in the industry we would expect that cotton may have been similar to last year in terms of overall packet sold uh, but i think what may have happened is that some of the larger players may have uh, increased their market share so we would say at an industry level in the case of cotton there could perhaps have been a little bit more consolidation in terms of the larger players becoming uh, bigger on the maize front uh, uh, i think like what sanjeev already mentioned uh, we have crossed the 100 crore uh, uh, mark in h1 uh, maize uh, is our second crop to do so we already are you, you are aware that in paddy we do more than 100 crore we had hoped that cotton would be actually the second crop to cross 100 crore but that it has not to be but i think on the maize front uh, the uh, understanding we carry is that contrary to again uh, classical expectations because if you remember commodity prices on maize were ruling poorly uh, oil prices had gone down thereby having a, a collateral impact on corn prices globally uh, all of those uh, uh, have actually been proven wrong we have ended up actually having uh, almost 25% growth in h1 on maize but we would attribute this to our product performance already i think it was mentioned that uh, the maize growth has come on the back of uh, our performance in tamil nadu where our product fit seems to be quite good uh, so we would say that uh, as a learning from the industry point of view well differentiated strong performing products may have continued to do well uh, uh, there has uh, we don't see 
that down trading which is kind of the view that was expressed for FMCG for example has actually played out in the case of agriculture. So we think that maybe it is a more classical customer response that we have seen. So I hope that gives you a little bit of uh, the thinking that we are having on the uh, industry side for crop care and seeds. Well, thank you so much for such a detailed uh, reply and it was pretty elaborative. Thank you so much for that. Sorry, Rajat, just to add uh, one more dimension, that yeah. you know, uh, while our uh, field teams have been engaging uh, with the trade as well as with the farmers, we have prioritized the safety of our teams um, over the business. And uh, as has been mentioned, that uh, the kind of support that was needed for uh, some of the product launches of last year, we could not do that because of the inability of our teams to engage directly with the farmers in the field. But we understand that some of uh, the other industries, their field teams have been more active in the field. But uh, I think uh, as an organization, we have prioritized the safety of our people over the business. OK, uh, but next question, please. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. So uh, on the CAPEX side, uh, we have we have spent a significant CAPEX, I think, for the international business also in the last two years. Uh, however, now uh, compared our own expectations and demand for a key large molecule, we have seen, uh, you know, has 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 been moderated uh, in this quarter. So, is there a, a rethink of the planned CAPEX for the international business? And uh, related to this. Is uh, uh, all the heavy lifting in the international portfolio has been done by three home uh, molecules. So, uh, and in the past, we have talked about uh, uh, having a pipeline of new molecules. So, if you can talk a little bit about those uh, pipeline of new molecules for the international business and where are we in terms of the commercialization and how big those molecules could be, uh, just to help us understand the portfolio construct uh, going forward in this business over the next three, four years. So Rajat, in terms of uh, our new products for the international business, um, I did mention that our new multi-product plants will be coming up for commissioning only during Q3 of next financial year. And um, because our existing capacity, whether it is for pendimethylene or metribuzin, these are all uh, fully uh, booked in the sense that these plants will be running to capacity. Uh, so our new commercialization would happen only towards Q3 of next financial year. I may also add that uh, we will go through a process of product registration, which take have their own cycle times. There are certain markets like uh, Vietnam and Turkey, which are easier to access because of a more liberal registration uh, regime, which uh, is there in those countries. So the volumes during the initial years will uh, be small, which will ramp up over a period of time. So uh, I would just like to advise caution when we are trying to build models. Uh, and I would also like to add that our R&D pipeline for AIs is very healthy. And um, uh, we will start commercializing uh, at least two products during uh, Q3, Q4 of next financial year. So uh, we will be adding to our portfolio uh, of products. And as far as our existing product portfolio is concerned, the, the two key products that we're exporting, this is Pendi uh, and Betri, both of them are herbicides. And of course, Athifate is an insecticide. Uh, unlike some of the other herbicides, which are facing some pressure from the environment, uh, largely uh, glyphosate and dicamba, there is nothing negative about both these herbicides, pendimethylene and metribuzin in the international market. So we see a, a good uh, growth trajectory for both these, uh, these uh, actives for herbicides for the international market. Pendi, uh, um, uh, pendimethylene capacity also we are in the process of expanding. Metri uh, capacity we've already expanded and uh, once the uh, situation normalizes in terms of our exports, we will take a decision on further expansion of uh, factory capacity as well. So as an organization, we are positive on both these uh, herbicides for the international business. Thank you, Rajat. Uh, 
shall i just add yeah. sanjeev we've also had the capacity sanjeev on hexaconazole as yeah, well i i did yeah. mention that hexa yeah. was also the yeah. highest ever export that we did right during um, h1 and that capacity is already come on stream back to you rajat and the moderator thank you the next question is from the line of rohan gupta from edelweiss please go ahead rohan babu yeah hi sir good morning good morning rohan yeah, good morning good morning uh, yes sir hi uh, sir a uh, couple of questions sir first is on uh, this capex front so when uh, the new management joined and then we talked about 800 crore rupees capex out of that we have mentioned of the so far now 525 crore rupees has been uh tabulated that where high speed has to go i believe a large chunk of that is going to the head uh, uh, phase two plant which is going to commission next year uh just want to understand a little bit more on that balance 300 crore rupees uh, because you you initially planned that over next three years to four years all the money is likely to be consumed in terms of capex so do we have some clarity that where we are going to invest this 300 crore rupees and in terms of projects uh, any development has happened Uh, so rohan i uh, think broadly if you look at our capex uh, as you have pointed out that uh, the chemical zone the formulation plant will be taking a large chunk of it another large chunk of it is going into the uh, fz where we are building the multi product plant another large chunk of it is going into the new r&d center um, so these are three large tranches of investment that are happening apart from that there is a fairly uh, large tranche which has gone in for revamping our existing ais at the ankleshwar facility uh, apart from that there is a whole lot of investment which we are doing around automation of all our plant and machinery we also investing in mechanization of some of the material handling uh, which we are which we are doing so uh, the key capacity Uh, expansions are in the fcz and the cz the uh, uh, the uh, the other investments are for the future which is the really the r&d and also for uh, our existing product product portfolio to further strengthen that and we also indicated that uh, we will be uh, acquiring land for expanding our seed production uh, facilities uh, Uh, to facilitate and enable us to grow that category more rapidly in the coming years as well nagar would you like to add something more yeah i just want to add one comment uh, sanjeev for the benefit of uh, rohan since you asked that question yes uh, the uh, amount of capex uh, is between 525 and 550 crores that is our cumulative uh, you can say the a portion for which we have clarity in terms of uh, the 800 crore uh, investment plan that we had and sanjeev has already articulated it but one development which i want to uh, also share with you is that there has been a churn in that 525 to 550 meaning we had when we had shared with you in the previous meeting had a certain set of projects which was accounting for the total we have had a chance to relook at that and modify it a little bit and therefore after modification it still continues to be at 525 to 550 crores the, the figure remains the same but there has been a change in the constitution of the different projects <laughs> yeah for the balance 250 crores uh, we will uh, certainly be developing the plans as we go along uh, like i mentioned we have had the opportunity to churn the constitution of this 525 uh, crores we constantly keep doing it and it will happen over a period of time because it is a five year plan for the 800 crore capex uh, rohan uh thanks sir uh so second once again related to capex only uh so sir uh, in last six months we have seen that at the country level we have seen various challenges and even globally also that china uh, the threat and the dependency on china that the global companies are trying to reduce that and we are also facing some border tension so that's where we want to reduce our dependency as a country as far as the chemical is concerned uh do you see that, that in last six months uh, uh there has been any change in plan or the thought process in your company in terms of uh, investing further in the business and over next two years uh do you see that in uh, there are increased opportunities in terms of investment or any new molecules or the new intermediate which you have identified that you plan to go ahead uh, in terms of uh, making further investment in the business in, in next couple of years so especially last six months uh, because a lot of things have changed globally as well as in india So, Rohan, uh, you make a very good observation that a lot of things have changed. 
the government is also looking at how to strengthen manufacturing within the country. Uh, so this whole approach towards Atma Nirbhar, Make in India, and also they have already announced some PLI schemes for the APIs and for the electronic industry. I understand that uh, the government is also considering a PLI scheme for the agrochemical industry. So we have also been engaging with the government on that. So as an outcome of uh, the de-risking of portfolios as a country, I think uh, there will be movement and Dallas is very much uh, looking at opportunities for expanding capacity into intermediates as well, whether it is for our own requirement or whether it is to um, be a merchant supplier of those active ingredients. But those things are still work in progress. We have uh, nothing substantial or material to report at this stage. But I would just like to say that we are uh, looking at the space of intermediates as well as part of our uh, overall uh, portfolio. Uh, thanks, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I will have some follow-up questions. I'll come back in two. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhav Marda from Fidelity. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, my, my question basically was, you know, given this uh, China plus one um, uh, strategy that is playing out globally, uh, are we seeing increase in inquiries for uh, any more molecules that we can potentially, you know, do contact manufacturing for uh, ahead of the existing molecules that we have? Is there like an increase in the inquiry flow for us? Yes, brother. There, there is a considerable discussion uh, that is currently ongoing. Uh, nothing has yet been uh, firmed up or frozen, uh, but this is something very much on the uh, discussion table. Understood. And uh, uh, the kind of molecules that we will take up would be uh, more on the generic side or we might do more process synthesis kind of work as well. What would be the thought process in terms of what kind of orders you would like to take? No, no, we, are, we are very flexible. We are quite happy to do only off-patented uh, AIs. We are quite happy to support any of the global majors even with their uh, intermediates. Uh, we have our strength in manufacturing, we have our strength in R&D, and we are quite, capability, uh, quite capable of handling the entire uh, manufacturing gamut, whether it is for intermediates, whether it's patent, or whether it is for even uh, new innovative uh, molecules. But this really depends on the partner uh, uh, as to what, what is it that they would like Rallis to support them on. But uh, we are extremely flexible. I think, you know, given that... Uh, 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 the operator. Uh, Mr. Mazda, may we request you to come back in the queue for follow-up, please? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhiji Takela from IIFL. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning. Thank you so much for taking my questions. Uh, I just wanted to uh, check regarding the uh, domestic uh, business breakdown that you shared earlier on the call, you know, this... Uh, 486 crores versus 451 crores from last year. Uh, would it be possible to give us just the domestic formulations number within that? <laughs> Ashish, you yeah, yeah. I, I think I, in my opening remark, I, <laughs> I did say in my opening remark, what was my domestic crop care? One minute. Okay, was it this uh, 436 versus 408, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, my mistake. I, I missed that. <laughs> and... Uh, the other thing I just wanted to check, sir, uh, you know, th there has been some news flow regarding uh, the Chinese, uh, you know, uh, maybe cutting generics prices in a very aggressive way to uh, either protect their market share, uh, you know, in the generic AIs or maybe gain market share. Uh, so are we seeing any signs of that? And, uh, you know, is that one of the factors impacting our uh, realizations on our international portfolio? Yeah, I think uh, realizations have been generally under pressure. I wouldn't attribute it to specific reason what you're talking about. Like what was already mentioned in the case of Betribuzine, realizations have actually come down YOY uh, by almost 40%, right? Uh, but I think they have also been accompanied by a concomitant reduction in the raw material prices as well. So I think it is, uh, 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 it's on both sides, both on the... Uh, 
uh, AI pricing as well as the raw material pricing. Uh, we have had similar uh, uh, experience with, re with regard to pendimethylene as well. Um, so I, I don't think we could attribute it specifically to the reason that you mentioned, but generally speaking, there has been a reduction compared to last year. That's one of the reasons why our uh, uh, export revenues are uh, uh, tending to be lower despite the volumetric growth in terms of the constituent AIs. Right. Got it, sir. And uh, just one last thing and then... Okay. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirvai Mahavar from N Square Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, go ahead, Nirvai. Yeah. So, sir, we have on, uh, one question on domestic business front. Uh, we have seen a uh, dramatic reduction in the working capital, I think, down to 65 days. We just wanted to understand what is going right. Is it a company-specific development, or is it because the terms of credit for the industry was much better? What? So there's actually, um, uh, you know, uh, there are a couple of things playing out here. Uh, one, of course, um, is that we did introduce uh, trade terms uh, last year, which worked very well for us. We did some uh, further tweaking of the same trade terms, uh, which made it even more interesting. But fundamentally, I think the liquidity in the system uh, in the rural economy seems to be good. Um, perhaps uh, maybe the, uh, the trade is investing more in the business considering the kind of emphasis that the government has given on agriculture. They are also investing a little more seriously in the business. So overall, the liquidity uh, in the system uh, in the rural economy is, uh, is very good. Maybe I'd like uh, uh, Naga to sort of add so that you can give some more ideas as to what. Yeah, I think uh, I think you said it correctly, uh, Sanjeev. I think there is one definitely an external factor. We think that uh, the uh, money that is the op the the avenues available for investment of money is actually certainly come down for the uh, general body of trade, if you were to call it like that, because many other industries are not really providing that opportunity. So that's certainly a factor. What we have done, we have certainly, uh, 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 like we have been sharing over the last couple of calls, uh, refreshed our channel policies. We have uh, uh, made it attractive to uh, collect money. And even more so, we have focused on it in the first half. Because if you remember, uh, one of the things that uh, I think came up earlier was about our outlook towards CapEx. We are still fully, fully uh, resolved to drive the CapEx for the growth. And we are feeling that it would be a good opportunity to use the money released from the working capital to fund our uh, CapEx program. So we are actually focused on collections, and collections are significantly improved. That is one factor. Uh, secondly, we have also stocked up on inventory. I think we mentioned it in the investor uh, presentation also. Uh, uh, we have actually increased our inventory to cope with uh, raw material inventory I'm talking about to cope with the uh, COVID-related challenges and the other kinds of disruptions that we, are to that we were talking about. So uh, the net effect of all that is that the uh, uh, working capital has gone down to about 65 days from about 100 days, 104 days, I think it was last year. So that's the overall uh, picture. Uh, nearby. Uh, one more follow-up on the international business. We have, uh, uh, in our earlier communication, we have guided that international business is going to be 40% of our overall revenue mix. And last nine months, we have seen decline in that part of the business. So uh, as far as longer-term guidance is concerned, uh, do you maintain that international will be 40 and domestic will be 60? Yeah, I think... So, uh, APEC seems to be guided for that. So I think in the in the uh, immediate term, uh, the, the issues we have already articulated, but um, I think in the medium to long term, uh, a 60 40 between domestic and international uh, seems to be a good place for us to uh, have a portfolio of businesses which can withstand the uh, cyclic nature of uh, some of the issues that we may be facing, whether it is a monsoon in India or whether it is floods in some other part of the world. So we feel a 60-40 would be a good place for us to be. But yes, uh, over the last uh, two quarters, the, the, uh, the situation has been adverse, really because of the uh, price of some of these international products that we are selling, as well as the battery which we already articulated. So we had been at around 35% uh, during 
the last financial year, which has got eroded during the last two quarters. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amur Moria from Alpha Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. Hello, am I am I audible? Hello. Yes, yes. Go ahead, Mr. Moria. Yeah. Uh, sir, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Sir, in terms of this CAPEX which you had guided of about around 525 crore, can you give us the breakup for that? How much you are going to spend in formulation? How much in the multipurpose? How much you had utilized for the revamping of Uncle Ishwar plant? So, Mr. Moria, I did uh, uh, mention some broad areas that our key investments are going into. Perhaps we should just leave it there rather than going into specifics in terms of rupees, crores per project. So we may not be in a position to share that kind of granular detail. If it's okay with you, Mr. Moria. Okay. Okay. And secondly, sir, uh, if I may squeeze one more, uh, if I, if we, if we consider the peak and the metrobazine uh, revenue, which, which, I mean, which, which, which we had seen the impact in this particular uh, quarter. Uh, would the revenue growth would be something in the line what we had seen in the domestic business or much higher than that? So, Mr. Moria, your question is not very clear. Now, and this you understood it. So, so I'm saying, I'm saying, if I uh, tweak the impact of peak and metribazine in the current quarter revenue, uh, on a like-to-like -like basis, would you have seen the growth in the international business? I, I think yes. 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 I think. Uh, Ashish had articulated yeah. it, but maybe you just repeat it so that there is clarity on this for all on the call. So just in the explain what happens if you remove Metri and PKK from international business, how has the like for like compared? The growth uh, major uh, uh, growth uh, in the in the uh, main molecules of uh, uh, acetate has gone up by 17%, Penditech has gone by 46%. So uh, while Metri tech volume did come down, these two uh, products has uh, you know really taken care of the drop in the volume. So that is that is the overall. If you remove the impact of uh, uh, met, uh, metconazole metri, there is definitely a very handsome volume growth. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from IDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, on the domestic business, uh, this was uh, a fairly good season from a monsoon perspective, from a, from a Kharif for season perspective. Uh, you know, still a growth for the year uh, has been about 10 12 percent. Some of it you mentioned has been impacted by uh, a COVID related restriction. So, my question is two points. Well, I mean, in a, in a good year like this, what could have been ideal growth for us uh, if these restrictions were not been there? And in general, sir, at what pace do you see domestic business growing for you over, over a long term, sir? See, listen, if one looks at uh, Indian agriculture, I think we need to start there. If you look at the uh, uh, crop protection industry over the last couple of years, broadly it has been growing at around 8 to 10 percent. Right? And uh, this has been a good year. So one can expect that maybe the 8 to 10 percent will start looking like 10 to 12 percent uh, growth in, the, uh, in this particular sector. Uh, because, you know, there is going to be um, some amount of time which will be required for the agricultural practices in India to really come at par with global uh, practices. And here I'm talking about specific consumption of agrochemicals per hectare of land. India tends to be on the lower side, 0 0.6 kilograms per hectare compared to some benchmarks which are maybe 5, 6, 7 kg kilograms per hectare. So we are very far away from those kind of international benchmarks of application of agrochemicals per hectare of land. But overall growth, because this is a good year, my assessment and our view is that it can go between 10 to 12 percent uh, during uh, uh, this particular crop season of Kharif and Ravi. And so, uh, going forward, do you see any material lift up in this number, or this is where one should, you know, when one is modeling, thinking about domestic sales growth, a 10 to 12 percent sales growth for us also should be like a ballpark number to run with? So, I think, as I mentioned, that uh, in the immediate term, it may be 10 to 12, but in the longer term, it is expected to accelerate even better. 
as um, the kind of focus that the government is bringing on doubling farmer income, the kind of support that is coming through the various uh, reform schemes and all. So uh, there is going to be more money in the hands of the farmer to be able to invest better in his crop, to invest both for productivity as well as quality because we certainly feel that uh, uh, the kind of wastage which happens today due to crop loss can be significantly reduced by better agricultural practices. So uh, as, the, as the money with the farmer keeps improving over time, his ability to invest in his, in his uh, crop will keep improving. So this 10-12% uh, growth will in the medium term go up. Of course, over a period of time it will normalize, but we certainly see the trajectory in terms of growth of the sector, both for crop protection as well as crop nutrition, as well as uh, use of better quality seeds. So these are all the focus that the government is also trying to bring, apart from the whole conversation about organic farming and all which is there, but certainly uh, uh, organic farming and use of organic uh, and use of chemical fertilizers will need to move hand in hand. It's not that organic farming will replace uh, use of chemical in the um, even the medium to long term. Okay, thank you, Andersla. Thank you. The next question is from Michael Sanjit Securities. Please go ahead. Can you repeat the Sorry, name? We couldn't hear the name, uh, <coughs> auditor. Uh, Ranjit Sirumala from BNK Securities. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just one quick question. Uh, the OPEX, the other expenditures on our higher base is up around 4 or percent. So just wanted to get some sense. Is there any forex angle to it or is it just a normal thing? Because uh, during these uh, COVID times, uh, we were expecting a bit kind of a flattish other expenditures. So some bit of clarity on that will help. Thank you. Other expenses you are talking about? So I'm not very clear. Your question is not very clear, but if it's related with CapEx. Um, ex other expenditure, sir. It's the OPEX. Other expenditure. Other expenditure. Other, okay. OPEX. Other expenses. OPEX. Other expenses, see, while there would be some savings on travel costs, because travel has not happened in last, uh, say, four to five months, and then a lot of amount has been spent on uh, reaching out to the trade, the farmers, customers, uh, on on e platform. So uh, while money would have been saved because of no travel or no overseas travel, a lot of amount has been spent on this. Uh, and uh, compared to previous years, uh, this thing I think there's hardly any increase that way in overall basis. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Archit Joshi from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, in the earlier comment, uh, you had mentioned uh, that uh, some of the other herbicides, like glyphosate or dicamba, are facing certain problems in the uh, overseas market. Uh, so, considering that, uh, wouldn't our products like Metrobism or Fendi uh, should be growing, uh, taking advantage of this situation? And also, if you can uh, uh, share a few cents of yours on uh, how the global landscape is looking for uh, this entire pack of uh, herbicides. Uh, considering that some of the other herbicides also have seen a uh, 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 pricing pressure. Uh, so if you would like to share any thoughts on that. Uh, so yes, I think on the uh, herbicide front, uh, there are different products, as you know, uh, which is uh, having different kinds of challenges. Glyphosate and the dicamba have very different challenges. From our point of view, we do believe that metribuzine uh, uh, has a good uh, uh, positive future. And that is why we have uh, invested in the capacity expansion. Uh, however, at this point in time, there is certainly a lull in the demand, and we are expecting it to catch up. And over a period of time, we feel confident that uh, our uh, capacity utilization, like what we can produce, will certainly be absorbed by the market. Whether it will substitute dicamba glyphosate, well, that's, that's a very different question. Uh, it may not, because I think the uh, requirements of the different farmers for different particular requirements are totally different. So it won't be an alternative in that way, but it will certainly be uh, having its own uh, uh, market. Uh, so that's on the metribuzine front. Otherwise, on the global level, I think uh, 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 agriculture in many, many parts of the uh, world have been, has been somewhat less affected compared to the other businesses. 
we think that that is showing up in terms of the volume growth that we are getting in many of our products. And again, remember that the volume uh, challenges we are facing in Metribuzin is not COVID related. It is more related to the weather conditions of last year. So that is not really a result of COVID. So I think at a, an overall level, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, export uh, business looks uh, as it as it looked six months back. There is, I don't think, any impact of COVID uh, per se at a macro level. Yes, you would have specific pockets that there will be challenges, and there would certainly be supply challenges. We have faced supply challenges as well. But from a demand point of view, uh, I think we feel that it is uh, uh, as it was uh, before COVID. Uh, right, sir. Uh, so just an addendum to the previous question. Uh, sir, uh, uh, there's been a huge flow regarding uh, the 27 products that were banned by the uh, central government, and only the export licenses were uh, doled out in favor of the industry. Uh, sir, uh, in a in a in a case wherein uh, the like uh, the registrations of the products that we manufacture, for example, pending incident, uh, if those are suspended or cancelled by any chance, uh, would that impact our uh, exports? Would the other clients that we are catering to in the in the foreign markets, uh, would we have a pushback in terms of uh, procuring the material from an Indian manufacturer whose license or registration has been cancelled for a particular product? Uh, that was my last question. So thank you. So, Archit, uh, the question of cancelling license for export doesn't arise at all because uh, uh, subsequent to the uh, draft ban order on these 27 molecules, there was a, a, a notification which had come that this particular draft ban does not impact any exports. So that issue is not there at all. Apart from that, the government has still not taken a decision on these 27 molecules and um, all uh, industry players have resubmitted the required data that has already been made available to the regulator related to the information that they had sought over the last couple of years. Almost 80-85% of the data had already been collected on an overall basis and there was still some data collection which was happening because it takes a number of seasons before all the data becomes available. So this uh, 27 molecule ban for domestic is still work in progress. It is there is no final decision on it. And as far as the export of any of these 27 is concerned, there is no issue whatsoever. Thank you, Ashutya. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, just a uh, uh, follow-up of the earlier question in terms of any permanent reduction in operating expenses. So, have we seen uh, any permanent reduction happening? I mean, you mentioned about the transport cost, uh, which has reduced, but any permanent in nature? And an addendum to it is, uh, again, in terms of uh, the expenditure on our SHE uh, initiative and uh, the DLD plans uh, from the CAPEX plan. Thank you. On the permanent reduction on OPEX, no, I don't think we see any permanent reduction uh, uh, because what has actually largely reduced is the uh, kind of money that is involved in travel. Uh, certainly, there has been some reduction in uh, on-ground uh, promotional spend, which have all got ha hampered. Uh, however, uh, we have uh, had to, like what Ashish already mentioned, depend on uh, televisions, for example, television commercials or mass media, you can say, in order to cope with the challenges. So it doesn't necessarily show up as a saving in an effective way uh, on, 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 an, on an overall basis. Uh, but uh, we do expect travel to revert uh, to the uh, uh, normal levels post uh, uh, settling down of the uh, pandemic. There will certainly be some uh, changes uh, consequent to things like work from home and uh, being able to do certain meetings and uh, calls on the on the on the uh, you know uh, through the through the uh, AV medium and so on and so forth uh, uh, conference uh, uh, conferencing and so on. Uh, but I think but we think that it will probably be uh, uh, an improvement in terms of or an add-on to the way we have traditionally done things rather than. Uh, really resulting in dramatic reduction because certain activities like field promotion or even B2B engagements with customers, for instance, require us to physically be present. Uh, the the uh, 
the online uh, engagement uh, comes up short uh, in in regard to the requirements so on a permanent basis i, I don't think there will be any substantial uh, reduction uh, what was your second uh, question uh, Uh, so, in terms of SHG and the uh, ZLD of our facility. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about them? What is the question? So, uh, our, uh, our, uh, our all the facilities are ZLD, and the incremental cases. Uh, how is it planned in terms of uh, the uh, SHG components in it? Oh, uh, I'll answer that. Yeah. So, on the uh, ZLD, um, we have two of our facilities which are ZLD. the others are yet to be completely uh, made zld but they are all in compliance with the um, with the uh, with the discharge norms and uh, i had also mentioned that we are doing substantial investment in automation which also helps to improve the the safety of the plant and machinery and uh, these are also investments that we are doing we are also expanding as part of our overall capacity <coughs> overall capacity expansion of our manufacturing facilities these also involve expanding the effluent management uh, facilities as well so when we talk about capex for growth it also includes all the capex required for environment and safety management uh, all right uh, this is our clarification last time we have mentioned that uh, the methodology in industry in north america Power is pretty high. So, how is the current state, and uh, what the confidence does uh, it give that uh, probably by even of next financial year we'll be able to utilize our expanded material facility? Thank you. Well, I was not able to understand the question. Now, so I have also not been able so to. So, you have to repeat your question, Rohit, because it was not very clear. Ah, uh, yeah. So, last uh, call call, we had mentioned that uh, material building inventory is. Uh, were high in north america so what is the current status of that and uh, so i mean based on that what the confidence uh, does it give uh, to us uh, in terms of utilizing our metrogen facility uh, at optimal level by q1 fy22 as you mentioned in earlier remark yeah i think uh, that is true i think uh, uh, we did witness uh, large inventory levels and uh, uh how confident are we feeling i guess the confidence is uh, i would say more than 50% uh and why is that uh, because we have uh, as we have mentioned to you received uh, our own uh, uh 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 registration for uh, uh, metribuzine in the us market that allows us a larger market aperture uh, so that is one and secondly in q2 while the volumes have been lower than q2 of last year uh, the volumes were about uh, at the level of about two thirds of last year so i think uh, we we think that there will certainly be a revival over a period of time and we should be able to uh, utilize our uh, 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 metribuzine ai capacity uh, to the fullest extent in addition i think we have also uh, received our uh, uh registration for our uh, formulated product in brazil market metribuzine based formulation solo formulation that will also absorb though it's a small amount it will absorb in the initial days uh, that will also absorb a certain amount of the metribuzine ai uh, for it uh, for, for that purposes so i think we are confident thank you the next question is from the line of dhavan shah from icic securities please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity so i have a question on metribuzin only uh, so would it be possible to share uh, the inventory of metribuzin in terms of the tonnage and the overall demand of uh, the metribuzin uh, for the entire market and how long will it take you know to absorb the entire inventory uh, over the period of time uh, and the overall realization uh, what I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we won't be able to share you inventory figures because, as you can appreciate, it is competitive information from a pricing point of view, particularly in a B2B business. Okay. Uh, so uh, the inventory in the consuming markets, we do not have any line of sight to that at all. So, what's your expectation? I mean, how long will it take, you know, to absorb the uh, the surplus inventory from the market? Uh, will it take uh, two quarters, three quarters? I mean, 
is there any time frame uh, in your mind i mean if you can share so as it is what happened last two quarters have been very subdued we have seen some pick up in inquiries that has started coming now so we expect that h2 there should be some uh, turn around of this particular category and our own assessment is that from next financial year things should be pretty much back to normal okay and out of your you know announced capex of roughly 525 to 550 crores so so how much of that has already been spent and uh, what will be you know the upcoming capex i mean uh, for fy22 and 23 uh that was the uh, in this year's uh, plan for capex is around 160 to 170 uh, 60 to 170 crore that is the capex outflow major actually uh, because of the covid some of the capex outflows could not happen but uh, seeing the progress in the third quarter now onwards uh, we believe that we will be able to meet that uh, requirement and the other equal amount or little more would happen in next year uh, between the first and the second quarter largely the first and second quarter of next year major cash flow will happen okay okay so roughly 350 odd crore capex will be spent over the, over the period of this two years i mean the fy21 and 22 yes and and uh, roughly 100 odd crore capex has already been spent out of this 800 crore uh, right now uh, or yeah if you see the cash flow uh, which has been uh, you know reflected in yesterday's uh, results almost yeah. about uh, 80 87 88 crores have been spent on capex got it okay thanks thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments uh thank you all for uh, joining our q2 uh, uh, call um uh it from our perspective uh, there it has been a very good quarter uh, apart from the issues that we have uh, articulated related to our international business our domestic business um, has been uh, progressing quite well in terms of the expected uh, growth uh, our seed business is also picking up uh, we do continue to have some challenges related with our seed business.